Matt, Matt Merker, who wrote um, He Will Hold Me Fast, he talks about the YouTubification, YouTubification, which I think apparently is a word, of worship. I'm sure it is, yeah. And you know, we, we look at what's happening online and we think that's just inaccessibly good. All these beautiful people doing beautiful I don't think music. you and I are going to have any um, challenge in that area particularly. But yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it's all kind of inaccessible. And you think, how, how, how can that, you know, we talk about there's no such thing as a perfect church. That looks like the perfect church. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's unfair. I think it, it, it's good to recognise that, um, you know, God's given us what we need and the people, are, the people in front of us are the priority and who yeah. we're serving. Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Independence Podcast, um, the FIC Podcast. My name's Adrian Reynolds, Head of National Ministries for the FIC, and I'm here with Phil Moore from Cornerstone Church, Music Ministry, and um, husband to Jill. That's right. Father to two boys. (laughs) Have I basically described all your responsibilities there, Phil? I think it's just about... That's good. It's being stressed, thinking about it, actually, all those responsibilities. Yeah, there we go. (laughs) Phil, it's lovely to have you with us. We're talking music a little bit. You came and chatted to us before about singing in church. Really helpful time. Thank you very much. And you're here again. And we thought we'd talk a little bit today about how we look after musicians so this isn't a podcast for musicians it's a podcast for leaders and it it seems to me that if singing is so important in church life and the the music enables that the musicians enable that in in some way as leaders we need to be looking after and caring for our musicians don't we is that right yeah i'm so delighted adrian you're asking this question because i don't think i've ever been asked it before quite in the same way i think i don't i don't remember reading about it before but it must be right there's something I think really important in recognizing, I think, how we care for those who are involved in, in kind of leading the song worship in our churches. Yeah. And, you know, we have such a range of different churches, even across the FIC, uh, in terms of what music ministry will look like, you know, whether that's a, a small group of people involved in that, or even just one person in some settings, or, or a large group of people who are regularly involved yeah. in that. But, you know, one, uh, one thing I think that music ministry leaders, uh, music directors, volunteers have felt over the last couple of years is, is, is being stretched. You know, yeah. people have had yeah. to majorly skill up, haven't they, over the last couple of years with the kind of tech side of things and recording videos, producing services online. And, and I think our music musicians in church have, have borne the brunt of a lot of the maybe the stress and the, the extra work aspects of, of, of that. And, and and that's on top of the kind of normal challenges that we might face w- with music ministry in yeah, churches, yeah. you know. Every time I go to a conference, I, you know, I have people come up to me and saying, you know, how do we solve the problem of, of, of just getting more musicians for our church? Yeah, it feels yeah. like we've, we just are, are running on fumes here. We don't have enough. Uh, how can we kind of train up and raise up musicians? Or you know, how can we transition people out of music ministry roles as well? There's, there's also <laughs> that aspect who've maybe been, been doing it for a long time. Yeah. And, 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 and we, we want to make sure that we, we kind of prepare ourselves for, 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 for leading people well in, in, in the music ministry aspects. And so some of the challenges I think that keep on coming up with, with this is, is one of the challenges is, is the challenge of people, you know? So if we're in a small context and we've got few musicians we're working with, you know, we, we might have the feeling that our, our Sunday worship is utterly dependent on me. And yeah, we might yeah. have that feeling. And that's, that's a lot to have on one person's shoulders or a small group of people's yeah, shoulders. Yeah. Yeah, we, we might have frustrations with the fact that people just don't need to be, seem to be stepping up. And, you know, we might feel that even our own abilities don't match up with what we, 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 we'd like to be. You know, I'm not good as I ought to be. I'm not good enough to do this, but nobody else seems to be stepping up to serve. How do we, how do we train and raise up people? Those are the kind of questions that I think yeah. people are asking. Yeah. And so actually, up. there's an awful lot going on in the in the head of a musician. Yes, we, we as leaders, we and you and I are both musicians and leaders, so we kind of got two hats on. We need to think in terms of leaders for this podcast. We as leaders need to understand that actually, um, all all the same pastoral pressures that mm. are on mm. everybody else in the church are on our musicians. Mm. Um, you know, they're they're probably coming to church. You know having had an argument with the kids or whatever mm-hmm. else it may mm-hmm. be. Mm-hmm. But there's the added pressure of thinking, now now I've got to help the church sing and and play well yeah. and um you know not make any mistakes and play at the right speed and all those kinds of yeah. things. There's just a, there's a there's there's quite a lot yeah. resting on the musician's shoulders, Absolutely. aren't there? There's a lot going on there. And it is it's it's a kind of a significant leadership role within the life of the church is kind of what does it mean to have somebody who's who's kind of leading the, the sung worship aspect of our church. And, you know, that that's that's not just a kind of musical thing. There's a, there's a spiritual dynamic to that, which is is absolutely key. Go and say what you mean by that. 
Um, I think as we lead people in worship, it, it, it's asking the question of what, what is what is worship in the church? It's, it's, it's helping people in front of us to engage with God and leading people into a time of, of praising him, of also lamenting the things that are going on in the world, yeah. of recognizing the, the struggles that we have within ourselves. And, and so there is an aspect that it is, it is more than just physically sitting down at the piano or playing a few chords on a guitar. It, it's leading people on that kind of journey through that time together. Uh, you know, we, we sing to, to remember the gospel. We talked about this uh, in another episode that we did. We sing to remind ourselves of the truth yeah, of God's word. Yeah. But we also sing to respond, to respond mm. to the situations we face in life and respond to God in his word as well. And, and that's why it's, it's a spiritual dynamic to what we're doing. That's, that's interesting, isn't it? So I, I think, um, you know, just thinking about church life, um, if you have small groups in your church, not every church does, but if you had small groups in your church, you may well get your small group leaders together, look after mm, them, mm. make sure they're in, in good heart, make sure they're doing well spiritually, because that's actually what will enable the small groups to thrive. Yeah. And we should be thinking exactly the same way about musicians, shouldn't we? Yeah, absolutely. I think especially if we have somebody who's on a router multiple times a month, and you know they're serving uh, week in week out, and maybe maybe you know you, you could think of an example of a a, a young mum who's, who's got a family coming along to church, and actually her experience of church largely is 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 coming and serving, and you know she she may not even sit with her family very yeah, often. Yeah. You know I, I think we we need to recognise that that there are situations where we. We need it. We, well, every situation we need to prioritize the spiritual well-being, the spiritual yeah, health yeah. of our musicians in the church, who sometimes and you know musicians, you know we're both musicians. We can be an awkward bunch. We recognize that we can be challenging. Uh, not not me, opinions. brother. Not me, but I, I know I know what you're saying. Yeah. We've got too highly many strong opinions. musicians. Yeah, this is it. And we, we we can recognize the challenges. We can get stressed out with things. What what is the antidote to a stressed out, weary musician? Well, it's not going to be an arm wrestle. It's not going to be on a Sunday no, morning yeah. having the having the the yeah. argument or the, the 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 critique. It's going to be the embrace and yeah. the the welcome. And uh, I think as so, just seek to be as generous as we can possibly be. And one of the ways we do that is recognizing the challenges. And you know, I talked about the challenges of people raising yeah, up people. Yeah. There's also challenges of leadership. You know, uh, one of the reasons that music can be stressful in the life of the church is that we can be as as leaders, we can be too uh, last minute. And that's the, that's the challenge. Right. I can have okay. that challenge. We, yeah. we we maybe can you know the, if we're choosing the songs for the service, sometimes it can be you know Friday, Saturday before that list is that early <laughs> <laughs> is generated and yeah. sent out yeah. to the music team. Which you know if we want to be supporting um, our musicians to to lead people well, then we we need to plan well ahead. And so, you know, I know some churches, one church within the FIC, that they, they sit down at the beginning of the term and and they choose the majority of their songs that they will choose for the whole term. Right. And there might be some chain, changes within yeah, that yeah. from week in, week yeah. out. But there is generally, there is a, a shape and a structure to what they're doing. Right. So, right. you know, on, on whatever date they can pull out and we can see who's playing piano or leading the band that week could see which which yeah. songs are going to be. But even if the kind of you're in a, in a small smaller setting, yeah. If um, whoever you know your young mum that you're describing playing the piano, maybe, mm, mm. Um, or even the organ in some churches, um, yeah. there's no reason why she can't have a list of the songs on Wednesday or Thursday. Uh, yeah. If you've been thinking yeah. ahead, yeah. you can always change one or two, can't you? At the, yeah. the last yeah. minute, if you need to. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Especially if it's a well-known song that you can kind of you can you can you can fit into, but. I think we need to do that with all our ministries, just to try and make it as it as easy as as we possibly can to enable you know and to prepare the saints for active service, yeah. you know, to, to yeah. prepare people to be able to serve God in the way that they've been called to yeah. do that. And actually, s interaction at that level is really important as well. Mm -hmm. I think again, whether you've got a, a music team that's being led by someone or just one individual, yeah. um, you know, I, I think not just providing a list of songs, but maybe if, if I provided you let's say you were playing the piano in church and i provide you a list of songs i might say to you phil how do you think this is going to work mm, mm. just a question like that can yes. make someone feel more involved and engaged yeah. yes. and actually feel that they've they're being asked their opinion they've got something to yeah. offer and, and that's really important isn't it that's really important and and, and especially if we're not so musical and we're a church leader and we might be we, we might not think about the, the flow of a service as much as we possibly can and we could talk about this at length but it might be as simple as just saying i'm going to just, if we switched around song two with song three in a service then it, it might flow better the keys might work better right. and you, you might think you know and there is an aspect of this when we when we come into a service and we leave the service we've we've brought people with us on a journey 
yeah. and and uh, we, we know what journeys can be like. Sometimes there could be some turbulence on the way, you know, if it's a flight or so it could be a bumpy landing. Uh, we can recognize that when we're preaching as well. Sometimes it's, it's not as, as, as smooth as we might like it to be. But bringing people in with us, I think that's a great way to include people, involve people. But also, I think you will end up, as we generally do when we collaborate, with a, with a better yeah. Yeah. ending. A better and it's result. important to recognize, isn't it, the demands that, that producing the music is placing on musicians. Yeah. Um, we're fairly fortunate at church um, where I am in that we've, we, we have a scratch band basically mm. every week. We've got mm. some very accomplished musicians who can just turn up and play well together. That, that's pretty rare. So often groups, if you have more than one musician, are wanting to rehearse. Mm. And they're having to fit that in alongside, you know, all the other commitments. They're still mm. going to a small mm. group, perhaps in the week or a prayer meeting. Yeah. They've still got family responsibilities. So actually, we're, being a musician in church, serving as a musician, is loading extra responsibility on you, isn't yes. it? It's not like turning up and, and just sort of opening up the front doors. Yeah, yeah. The, yeah. The, the, You know, you're, you're putting an emotional pressure on people to ask them to serve in that way, aren't you? Yeah. You're, as a musician, you're thinking about these things. You're holding it. You know, you, you want to be creative what you do you want to be able to serve people well you're thinking about how do we you know make the most of the opportunity that we have to kind of come and sing together and you know somebody who's playing the flute or playing the drums you know, what what might it be that they're actually going to do during that time we, and we're, you're thinking through all that stuff yeah yeah and that all of that happens before you get in the car on a sunday morning or before you open the door sure. of the church you know you've got you've got to be preparing that stuff in advance and so that's why i think it's really important to prioritize good, healthy structures and boundaries. And it might be as simple as sitting down with the person and saying, or, or, or your music team and saying, what, what are our kind of, what, what is your capacity to be able to yeah. serve in this way on a Sunday across a month? And it might be that the people at different seasons of life say, well, I think I probably could do one, one a month or, or maybe two a month or something like that. But we, we, we just need to make, be careful that we are prioritizing kind of rest and healthy structures of that yeah. within our resolution. But then I, let's say I'm, I'm I'm part of a small church. That's, that's yeah. where I started out my ministry. I'm panicking at this point because I'm thinking, yeah. well, you're young mum. So I to keep coming back to it, which I think is a great example because I've, I've had that situation mm. in a church myself. So, so young mum is, is playing every week. She's mm. the only pianist. Mm. Mm. Um, and I'm, I'm thinking I do, I do, there's, there's a the pastoral part of me does want to have that conversation with yeah. her. What sort of capacity have you got? But the ministry part of me is thinking, if you don't play, we're stuffed. Yeah. So yeah. I'm sort of slightly torn here, wanting yeah. to try and try and get her to yeah. say my capacity is I can play every week. <laughs> yes. But yeah. also having that sort of that pastoral heart for her to think, well, that's not realistic. How do you kind of navigate when you're maxed out on capacity, which many churches are going to be? Yeah, definitely. I think I think you've also got to single out the priorities for the person, and I think that's really important as you've articulated what is going to be uh, sustainable for the long term. You know, not just squeezing as much as we possibly can out of a person. And yeah. we, we, we never think about people like that. But, it, you know, we, we want to be careful that we don't inadvertently do that with an individual, that they can just be burnt out. And, 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 and that is never going to be a long term solution to, to everything. I think, I think we've got to take a step back and assess what's going on. And, you know, if, if the problem is we don't, have, we don't seem to have enough people to raise up, you know, who's to be stepping forward. I, th I think we've got to be honest with the church on that. Try and, you know, when, when people come along to the church who are new, that's a really good time. You know, if you're a musical person in a, in, or if you're trying to assess what people's gifts are, I get in there really early with new people. I was like, so tell us, you know, do you play any musical instruments? Have you got any experience doing that? Sometimes on the first week, you know, we don't use them on the second week. We, we, we will make sure that we kind of get to know them well and, and help them settle in. But some of I've that got information... This, I've got this image of someone turning up a call <laughs> with, with a kazoo <laughs> saying, yes, I'm, I'm, I'm expert in the kazoo. When can I start playing? <laughs> I'm sure our children's ministry would be delighted yeah, to have yeah. someone like that come and serve. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I think we, we, we've got to kind of set those things early, get in there early with, with asking those kind of questions about gifts and things. There will be untapped musical skills and talent within your congregation. There just will be. And some of that's just a confidence. You know, I worked for a church a few years ago and I found it quite difficult to kind of to identify and raise up new mm. new people, and then it, it, you know I was coming to the end of my contract. I was I was, I was about to leave, and just as, as we announced that that we were moving on, I think people then recognised, oh, yeah, uh, Phil's yeah. not going to be here anymore. Yeah. We need to make sure that we step up yeah. and serve. And all oh, so all sorts of people came out of the woodwork, and I sat down with some people, gave them some kind of one to one piano lessons and things, mm. and and uh, and they grew in their confidence of that. And you know it's just brilliant to see that that's self sustained itself. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas I was in the situation where I felt 
well, music seems to be dependent on on me and my abilities. Yeah. Yeah. That's not a good place to be. We've got to try and bring people up, and and raising up people who who are who are younger. You know, if we've got um, young people in our, our church who are learning musical instruments, who are you know, encourage them by by saying, you know, would you would you think about um, using your skills or to to serve God either now or in the future if if that's appropriate? And I think we'll talk so, about that. A very practical question then. Yeah. Um, I mean, I always think what you really want in terms of musicians is, you know, you want people, whether it's one person or it's a band, you want people who, you know, kind of really accomplished, yeah. <laughs> got it all together. Um, what about people who are learning? I mean, actually, the irony is I, I learned to accompany. I didn't learn mm. to play the piano, mm. but I learned to accompany singing, actually playing in school Yeah, as a as a 12 year old playing in, in school assemblies on the organ and, and on the piano. Um, and I felt pretty poorly equipped to do that but i just learned yeah. by doing it yes is, is that the right thing to embrace as a church do, do we have to embrace a certain level of i don't want to say amateurism but kind of you know not the not the finished article in order to develop church musicians yeah i think i think a young musician and by that i mean i don't necessarily mean age i mean in terms of ability experience, or experience yeah, yeah. um i think we can give them opportunities earlier on and that, that was that's what happened to me you know like i First started playing piano in church, but I think I was about 10 or 11, uh, which I, and I look at it and think, wow, that was very young. But it was a smaller church. Uh, and and I was invited to kind of do one song each week to start with for a number of months. You know, I would be ruled out for the kids song. Oh, Phil will come and play the kids song, whatever it is. Yeah, but yeah. there was something about a little bit within the mm. context of a larger, or you might have an opportunity in your children's work or your youth work or you know, with your 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 um, senior citizens ministry or something like that, for a, a younger musician as experienced to come along and, and just play or lead a time yeah. of, of praise. That's good Maybe idea. in a lower pressure environment mm. than they might feel yeah. of the Sunday morning. Yeah. I, I, I had a slightly different story in church, not, mm. not school, but in church. Um, I played the piano with another pianist. We had two pianos, nice. which makes it sound a bit like a sort of a, a Billy Joel, Elton John, <laughs> you know, sort of head to head gig, but it wasn't. They were both plugged in and I was turned down yeah, um, yeah. more than I wanted to be, obviously, yes. as a precocious teenager. But yeah. actually I was playing with someone else. Um, he took the lead. Yeah. Trevor Marston, he was called. He took the lead and I played alongside him yeah. and, um, you know, I in confidence that way so there are yeah. there are ways of doing this yes, aren't there that definitely. aren't necessarily just yeah. okay it's all down to you now phil you're on this week off you go yeah and, and it's okay isn't it i think it's okay for our music not to be absolutely stunningly perfect and yeah. i think that that i say that to myself as a musician and i think we need to hear that and remember that it's okay for it to be a bit rough around the edges and and if that is helping and enabling someone to grow in their right, experience right. of serving uh, and and that's we've got to set the kind of level at which we think, I think we're comfortable with the music being yeah. like this. Because as we said in the previous episode, we we're accompanying singing. That's, yeah. that, that's the thing, and that's so the main event. that roughness around the edges is okay. Yeah, I, I wonder though if we we kind of do ourselves a little disservice because and um, this isn't meant to put you down at all, but the music at conferences is so good, sure, so professional and so well done. I think it's quite easy to go along to those conferences and think, oh, if only church were like this every week. Mm, mm, We've got to fight against mm, that a little bit, haven't we? We do. And I think that's why we really enjoy it when something goes wrong. <laughs> and I think that's So do good. I, just to say. And, and sometimes maybe we deliberately should do that. Uh, <laughs> so, so if anything goes wrong, you know, the next FIC yeah, conference. It's deliberate. Okay. <laughs> got it. Uh, yeah, I think we've got to be careful with that. And that, that's what, you know, they kind of... Matt, Matt Merker, who wrote um, He Will Hold Me Fast, he talks about the YouTubification, YouTubification, which I think apparently is a word, of worship. I'm sure it is, yeah. And you know, we, we look at what's happening online and we think that's just inaccessibly good. All these beautiful people doing beautiful I don't think music. you and I are going to have any um, challenge in that area particularly. But yeah. <laughs> and it's just, it's all kind of inaccessible. And you think, how, how, how can that, you know, we talk about there's no such thing as a perfect church. That looks like the perfect church. Yeah, yeah. And um, you know, that, that's, that's, that's unfair. I think it, it, it's good to recognise that, um, you know, God's given us what we need and the people... Uh, the people in front of us are the priority and who yeah, we're serving. Yeah. It's, you know, yeah, that's helpful. We, we shouldn't be interested in, you know, how can we be a church which has music which reaches the UK? The people that our highest priority, and like I remember sitting down with, with uh, Colin Webster, who was, is a friend and a great mentor of mine, and he said, you know, you know, the highest calling is to serve the people who are in front of yeah, you. Yeah, that's really helpful. And actually, as, as leaders, just coming back to that sort of relationship between leaders and musicians, um, I think what I'm picking up from you is, is, 
is that same pastoral strategy we would have in normal life. We need to have for, music, for musicians, i.e. we need to treat each one individually mm. and care for and look after each one. Yeah. So uh, the capacity thing is interesting. Um, I don't find it particularly stressful turning up to church and plugging. Just, you know, if I'm at a visiting church and they haven't got any musicians and they say, do you mind playing the piano? That's fine. Yeah. That's fine. I don't mind that. Be happy with that. Some people are completely stressed out by that. So actually yeah. it's knowing the individual, isn't it? Yes. Knowing what their individual capacity is, how they tick, which yeah. is key to any pastoral care, but actually is key to pastoral care of musicians too. That's right. There's all sorts, you know, we've got all sorts of things in our kind of emotional bag as we come into church, all yeah. of us do. Yeah. And, you know, we'll come in and some of that we've got to park on the way in as if we're serving, you know, it's not always appropriate for us to share everything, but we've got to remember that we're, we're church family and we want to look after people. And, um, some of that's as, as simple as, 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 as the, as the, as the thank you or the, uh, incur little encouragement, which is a specific encouragement about something that somebody has done. Uh, you know, I, I generally try and find something encourage, you know, if I'm visiting a church and, you know, I want, I want to talk to the musicians and say, I really appreciated how you led us yeah, yeah. in that time and did that specifically. And sometimes we, we might think, oh, well, they're up the front, you know, like the preacher. They must be getting thank yous all the time from everyone. No, um, That's not leaders, always the case. Leaders, you need to know that musicians get a lot of critique. Too fast, yeah. too slow, too loud, too quiet. It, and it, our tech team, yeah, you know, I, yeah. like I, I'm always trying to intercept <laughs> anyone who goes to our uh, our PA people and just, yeah. you know, kind of have a conversation with them just to see what they're going to do. But I, I think we've got to be we've got to be careful and cautious of that, you know. And, and but also recognising the importance of, you know, I would bring PA people into the music team. Yeah, thank you. It. And that's a, I, I, that's a remiss of me not to think that. You're absolutely right, aren't you? That actually um, how, if, if you have that kind of set up, how someone mixes the faders yeah. at the back is really important yeah. actually to the whole that's right. music situation, isn't it? Possibly the, the, in terms of setting the tone in of your service, your PA person is probably yeah. the most important, important, important person in well, that a, factor. A, and a great example of that is... Um, uh, just last Sunday, um, your your church cornerstone was on Radio Four. You, yeah, you were doing right. Sunday worship, and um, I was listening into it. Um, it's obviously mixed by the BBC professionals who who know what they're doing. But what really struck me about it was how good the mix was. Mm, there was just mm, enough music mm. to be able. I was singing along, um, as you might imagine, in the kitchen, it, and there was just <laughs> enough music to be able, be able for me to sing along. But I, it was clearly congregational yeah, worship. Yeah, yeah. And, and I think actually, well, I, I sent you a little text, and I, I, I thought to myself, this has been mixed really well. The mm, person knows what they're mm, doing. Mm. So actually investing in the people who are controlling the sound, who have, you yeah. know, it might be just someone who's got their, their hand yeah. on one button, or it might be someone who's got a more complicated setup. Absolutely. That's really important too. And recognising, I think recognising when it's been particularly helpful or, or, or you recognize that oh, the, the mix was really good this week you know it's trying to bottle that it's really hard because it's yeah, you know one yeah. person's ears are different from another person and so it's what it was what is difficult with the kind of tech tech and the mix side of things is to try and build in a consistency yeah yeah but i think it's important for you as, as a church leader to sit down with your tech people and, and, and have a conversation about what what is the sound of our church what is the tone of our church? Right. And that can feel like a, quite an abstract question. But, you know, is it is it that we want to prioritise congregational worship? Well, I think it probably will be across the board. We, we don't want it to be a performance situation. No. But but one, one of the best ways to prioritise congregational worship, and this is a kind of a counterintuitive in some ways, we, we always think that we need to turn down the mix in order to help people sing better because then you can hear yourself better. Actually, it, it needs to be supported well. So it's not just a, a volume thing. It's more nuanced than that. Right. I think it's about right. how do you shape, and, and there's some great guys around uh, who, who, who could help with that uh, in terms of um, training and equipping our, our tech teams and our church musicians. As you mentioned, I, I do a bit of training with uh, Music Ministry UK. Um, they've got several conferences coming up this year for church musicians um, across the country. I think they've got one in... Um, uh, Edinburgh, they've got uh, London, they've got Bristol, and we've got one in Belfast as well this year. And uh, we, there's, that's a great opportunity for church musicians and tech teams to to come along and spend a day thinking both theologically about why do we yeah. do what we do, yeah. but also practically about how do we do that better. Yeah. I've and, been to one of those, spoken to one of those. They're, they're mm, great, really commend them. But I think, I, I love what you said before, it's, it's still okay for this to be rough around the edges, yes, isn't it? And I yes. think that's... You know, we're, we're, we're living this side of, of glory. Yeah. Um, everything is not going to be perfect and we need to accept that. And actually that's yeah. the value of a, 
a, a music team that's tied into the local church where mm. there are real mm. relationships. People love one another. Yeah. You accept people for who they are. You accept their limitations. You accept their, their gifting. You kind of, you know, you forgive when things go wrong. It's, yes. it's, 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 it's the beauty actually of music in a local church. Having said yeah. that, you know, the conference seems to be the sort of flagship event. Mm. It's not real. Mm. Mm. And it, it's the music and the singing in a local church, which is yeah. real yeah. and is worked out in all those kind of, you yeah. know, strange yeah. relationships yeah. that we have in the local church. Yeah. And, and that's why it's, it's, it's okay. You know, and, and my wife's constantly telling me this when I'm stressing out about, oh, we don't have a drummer this week. We don't have a bass player this week. We don't have a, or whatever. And I'm like, oh, I need to text Ryan frantically on a Saturday night to get somebody. It's, it's, and she tells me it's absolutely okay just to have you and a piano or just have an acoustic guitar player. And that, that is all that you need. Yep. Actually, what do we actually need to be able to sing? Well, we need our voices. Yes. And people have been doing that for generations, haven't they? You know, singing. Uh, uh, and those are some of those precious moments, I think, in our conferences mm. and in our gathered times together. It's, when, it's actually when the band stops. Yep, yep. And um, when we hear one another singing out um, uh, songs, which are, are well-known songs, or which are, we are singing these truths to one another. And, and those are really special moments. And we, we kind of want to bottle that and take it back yeah, home. Yeah. Cur um, curveball question. You've uh, talked about how uh, music is a ministry. We're serving mm -hmm. people as they sing. Can, can somebody who's not a Christian lead the music or be involved in the music? I think it's a really interesting question. And, and, and though people may land in different places on this. I, th I think I've come to the conclusion that um, the question behind the question, I think, with that is what, what are we doing when we lead, when we lead people? Yeah. Is it merely... Yeah. A, a musical event? Is it a, a performance activity? And I, I think we'd all agree that it's not just a musical performance. Um, but why is that? Well, I think I think because music is a is a as we lead people in in church, it's a spiritual activity where what we're doing is leading people in the worship of God. And so one of the qualifications I think to do that is be able to have a heart which is understanding and also focused on the the main aim of trying to praise God in what we're doing in in, in that, uh, that worship moment uh, and and it's tricky and I recognize one of the one of the questions that might obviously come up with that is is a practical one of well, we 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 just have an organist who yeah, comes in yeah. we pay him every week to come and play the the music in our church he's not a Christian um you know I, I think I think we want to be, be thinking about how we disciple people as we as we lead them in 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 in, in our church music ministries and and point them to to the Lord so it is a spiritual activity I think you do need to be a Christian in order to do that yeah it, are there ways in the life of the church in which you can use gifted and talented church musicians totally I think I think you know it might be you have a church barbecue and you want to have a, a jazz band playing yeah, along yeah, yeah. absolutely get get your musicians in, and that might be a really helpful way of connecting with them and engaging with them and recognizing their gifts but the prayer is we want that person to come to faith yeah, and to recognize yeah. this is what it's all about when we when we gather together to sing to God it's not just singing songs because we have a lovely time when we do that is singing songs because we have a love and affection mm. for the Lord who is at the centre of that. What about if I've got no musicians? Or perhaps I've listened yeah. to this podcast, felt guilty about the the single piano player um, that I have and want, want to give him or her you know, a week off once a month. Is, is that doable? Yeah, I think it absolutely is. You know, one, one of the things that the pandemic, we've got to look for the opportunities and the, the blessings of the pandemic, don't we, where we can find them, has brought to us has been that uh, we, have, we now have a, a vast range of, of, of videos, of, of, music, of songs and really well, well done, put together pieces by a whole range of different churches. You may have done some in your own church as well, which you could, you could take and you could give even as part of a service or as a... Um, uh, for give somebody a week off, you know, it, it's, you, you, the church isn't going to fall apart if one Sunday you don't have any musicians and you, yeah. you're singing along to a video. Uh, another way it might be that you you pool resources. You might have a, a church down the road which is able to say, well, once a month we could send a musician yeah. to release, you know, your 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 single piano player who could. Um, um, who could have a week off. And yeah. I think that'd be a great blessing. So don't leave it till you suddenly got no one. Yeah. I think absolutely. you're saying, yeah. And pray, you know, pray that God would bring you musicians and, and raise up people from in the congregation. And, you know, that is a good opportunity for you to say, well, where, where, are, where are the next recruits coming from? Where, where are people yeah. who could get involved? Okay. And um, just to, so people listening are aware, be careful of downloading videos from YouTube yeah. and breaking the copyright. We have got an article on the website we can link through, which talks about copyright. There are people who produce songs for singing. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think ABBA 
um, in Wales produced a really good set of um, some quite classic music yeah, um, for yeah. church singing, but actually it's really good to sing along to. Um, that's available uh, for, they've made that available free. So so do check yeah, copyrights. That's great. Music um, Ministry UK have got a bit on their website as well, which have got song song downloads, yeah. um, which are, are fine to be used. And uh, Go Chatter Media have yes, got some yeah, on their, their website. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's, yeah. there's, there's, there's it, a whole it is, range. It is important, isn't it, to recognise that if music, musicians are professionals and they've done something yeah. as their as their job, we shouldn't be, um, well, we shouldn't be thieving people's stuff anyway, but, yeah, but certainly not yeah. um, Christian musicians. So we need That's to be right. careful with that. That's right. Great. Yeah, yeah, Phil, definitely. you've been a great encouragement. Thank you very much. I, what I've taken away from that actually is, um, I mean, I help lead the music team at our church. Actually, I need to invest a little bit more in them as people, not just as musicians. Mm. I think that's a temptation as a leader. I'm always thinking of them as musicians. Mm. I'm always mm. thinking of that woman as the violinist and that man as yes. the, the drum player. I need to think of them as individuals, as as saints, as as sheep to be shepherded. And I think if, if we did, to do that as leaders, really we'd be um, making great advancement. Yeah, that's right. Faithfulness to God is a better goal than excellence, I think. Yeah, thank you. And, I, 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 you know, our temptation is we want things to be good. And that's, that is a good ambition. Yeah. And we want to be improving and, and helping people to sing well. But we've got to recognise that the the ultimate goal is is is, is, is our, our spiritual health. Yeah. Thank you. Phil, thanks so much for joining us. We're going to record a bonus episode, which you may be interested in, which is actually for your pianists. So if you've got pianists in church, especially if you've got pianists who are playing on their own and you're thinking, how do we do that well? We're going to come up with some tips for them. Because so you can um, point people towards that. For the moment, though, thanks for joining us and thanks for joining us on Independence. Don't forget, you can subscribe using all the normal means and methods and I look forward to catching up again with you soon. <laughs>